and we're going to go ahead and move into round number two. So on our left side we have Darren and on our right side we do have Ben again. So we know Ben is on his teamer stuff. We'll see what Darren is playing here pretty soon as we move into round number two. So we haven't seen the mirror march yet out of Ben's side. That's what we're hoping for. A mirror march and make some flip some coins. I hope Ben's got a coin on hand. And we'll roll some dice and we'll see who goes first. So Ben there with a very nice ten. Darren on seven. So Ben will be playing first. Take a look here at opening hands. Ben's got, uh, looks like two land, two, three land there, and a guild gate. It looks like he might be missing the mountain there. Uh, nope, two guild gates, cards, mirror march, sounds good. <laughs> uh, it does have that scorch mark as a piece of early removal. And he does have a Sunder Shaman if it can hit another uh, red or green source. On Darren's side, we have four lands. Uh, Blade Brand, Watchful Giant, and a uh, card on the far left. Something. But he looks like he is on a Orzov build. So first time seeing Orzov here. We'll see how well it does. That looks like another copy of Blade Brand. All right. So we're going to need some creatures there. So we can blade brand them. Ben is very happy here to just play some uh, play some gates here and buy some time. So blade brand, uh, two mana instant dark creature gains death touch until end of turn. Draw a card. So it has some very nice synergies with some other Rakdos cards, Footlight Fiend and Dagger Caster. Uh, so Dagger Caster dealing one damage to each creature opponent controls. If you give it Death Touch uh, with the trigger on the stack, it will wipe your opponent's board. And Footlight Fiend can two for one with Blade Brand, as the damage uh, from the 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 Fiend, the power on it of it just doing combat damage will kill something. And when it dies, and it pings something for one, uh, the game does look back to the last instance of the card. And it did have death touch when it died, so the point of damage will also have death touch when it pings something. So you can two for one very nicely there. I guess if, if it is, it is essentially a two for two, but you're creating a one one and a combat trick to take care of two of their big creatures, uh, potentially. So nothing there for Darren on turn number uh, three. Ben does have a four four here with trample. I believe Spellbreaker is a is a four a three three. Yep, yeah. three mana three three with right and trample. So no land there for Ben, unfortunately. So he does need to draw another land there, so he can play his Sunder Shaman. As long as it's not an island, we're good. So on four here for Darren, he's going to play Consume. This is the Orzov split card. So he's going to force Ben to sacrifice the creature with the most power on his side. So that's going to be the uh, Spellbreaker. And Darren's going to be gaining a life equal to the power of that creature. So going back up to 20. Ben still not hitting land. And just having to pass the turn. So Darren here getting some some room to breathe and, and build up board and get some more land going. There's a Concordia Pegasus there, two mana, one, three, flyer. Got to go catch up tomorrow though. Can leave the one open to pet numbers. Thank you, Yak Yak. Thanks for joining. 
Thank you also for the lurking. We appreciate it. So on five here for Darren. He does have two Watchful Giants and a Debtor's Transport. Those are those three cards are all six drops, uh, but he can play the Pegasus this turn. So he does have three six drops in his hand. Um, all big powerful creatures, but you are going to have to hit that extra land. And Ben's still not hitting that land, so going to discard there. That's the Rubble Ruin. That red mana six mana six six. Rumbling Ruin. Let's see, did Darren hit his land? Nope, still on five. Hadrian Noxious. Something or other. Gastrodon? Gastrodon, I think. Uh, Gruidon. Ugh. Jake, can you pull up Noxious Gru Gru Grudion? Grudion? You can talk about how to pronounce it. Grudion. I have no idea. Some of these magic cards, they're uh. <laughs> Gruidion, right? But it's, it's, it's R, it's a Gru Grudion. There's a Scorch Mark, so we're going to take care of the Grudion there. So it's going to exile, exile it. And still no land there for Ben. So Darren untapping here. It does hit that 6 land, very nice. So we can now start playing our really powerful 6 drops and speed up the clock here for Ben. So Debtor's Transport is a 6 mana 5 3 with Afterlife 2 and the Watchful Giant is a 6 mana 3 6 that makes a human when it enters the battlefield. Or a 1 mana, a uh, 1 1 soldier or human token I believe. It does make a human token, that's right. So coming in for one there with the Pegasus. And just chipping away. Uh, ben did not hit that fourth land, so he's just going to scoop. He still had two more turns before he got there. And by that time, Darren would have way too heavy of a board presence for him to try to contest. So, better to just save some time and go ahead and move on to game number two. So there, unfortunately for Ben, being stuck on the three lands is not uh, great for the Gruel deck. Uh, like we did talk about last uh, week with uh, the Alex here in the booth, it, it seems like for this format, when you hit that kind of three to four mana uh, slots, you start to see the really impactful cards for this for this limited environment. So being stuck on three there with only one three drop and having a bunch of fours and fives in hand is pretty tough. Looks like there might have been a judge call. Oh no, nope. looks like we're sideboarding something. So Ben obviously cheating there as he's got his whole uh, giant sideboard from his pet fat pack so he can just pick whatever he wants. But like we did say earlier, it is completely rigged. Darren here is switching up his glasses. This is to get that secret advantage. 
They have both players showing their uh, <laughs> desire to win here. That, that class is swapped though. <laughs> and Darren is one of our uh, older uh, players here. With uh, Dason. Bringing the young ones in. Always, always nice to have that support. Some great things to talk about just in between shuffling here. How was how was everyone's Friday? There, there's some conversation. Twitch chat, help me. Talk to me. I'm missing my uh, my co-host here. I need some uh, conversation starters. In opening hands here. Hi, Jake. Yes, thank you <laughs> so much. All right. Like Darren's got. All right, looking at Ben's hand here. He's got four lands. Ben the Biomancer is Scorch Mark. He's got five lands. So he can play a Biomancer in one and loot with it on two, dumping one of his lands to draw another card. Darren here. Five lands, Orza, Racketeers, and a Blade Brand. So Darren playing a very creature, not heavy, but like top heavy build of Orzob so far that we've seen. Uh, the Racketeers being a five drop in the last game, we did see the uh, the two Watchful Giants, which are both six drops, and the Debtor's Transfer, which is also a six drop. So it looks like he's kind of playing with things like uh, the Pegasus. Um, and the blade brands early to try to get him up to those impactful five and six drops. And it does look up that draw was the Pegasus there. So a nice early play for him available on turn number two. So I've been on tapping there. Playing land number two, coming in for one with the Biomancer. So Darren taking one, they're going to 19. I think Ben may have a quench in hand, which would explain not uh, adapting the Biomancer before damage. As there is a Concordia Pegasus there. Oh, as a uh, fairy duelist. So flashing that at the end of turn. And there, I believe, was a Sunder Shaman. That was the draw for the turn. So they're coming in for two here. Of note, the Biomancer is a 1 1. So. Darren can choose to block there and force Ben to adapt or lose his Biomancer, but I'm sure Ben would be happy to adapt anyways. Fairy Duelist there. Great blue common in this set. Uh, flash Flying 1 2. When it enters the battlefield, target creature and opponent controls gets minus 2, minus 0. Potentially setting up some very nice double blocks, and also just as a straight combat trick. So Ben there, adapting the Benthic Biomancer, drawing a card and discarding a card whenever a counter gets placed on that Biomancer.
the Darren. It's a Knight of Sorrows, another five drop for Darren, and a Debtor's Transport as well. Six drop there. So he should have plenty of time to get up to those cards. The only problem is that, uh, oh no, he does have the Pegasus, so he's good on the Flyers as well. He's going to be taking quite a bit of chip damage here, and if Ben can hit fourth land and start dropping some of these Thunder Shamans, which he does, this could be very bad for Darren here very quickly. As he will need some way to deal with these huge four mana five fives. Deciding what he wants to do on turn number four of this game. This is game number two of round number two. Coming in here with the 1 2 flyer and the 2 2 on the ground. Darren has a 1 3 to block with. He chooses to block the Benthic Biomancer. He's also going to be blade branding the Pegasus. So Pegasus is going to gain Death Touch, and Darren will draw a card. Ben has no good way to really get around this. He has a Scorch Mark uh, in hand, but it doesn't do a whole lot. He still loses the Biomancer. So taking one from the Fairy Duel is still there. And there is a Xurta Goblin. And a pass of the turn. Oh, uh, Ben does have an island, and that's why he cannot play the, the Sunder Shaman. He needs another green or red source. Actually, he needs another red source uh, in order to play it. So Darren here going to his fourth turn. There's the land drop for the turn. There's a Sentinel's Mark on hand, Knight of Sorrows, two Swamps, the Orza Racketeers, and the Ditter's Transport. So a Sentinel Mark here, buffing up the Concordia Pegasus up to a 2-5. And it does have Addendum. I believe it gains First Strike. We'll double check that real quick. This. So, two mana, flash, enchant creature. Uh, enchanted creature gets plus one, plus two, and has vigilance. Uh, and addendum, if it was cast during your main phase, the enchanted creature gains lifelink at the end of turn. So, good swing in there for two with the Pegasus. So, now he's a two five vigilance Pegasus, which blocks both the goblin and the duelist, uh, the fairy duelist, very well. Ben here still missing on that land drop really wants to play some of these big creatures in his hand, but he's unable to. Just coming in here with the Zurta Goblin. If Darren chooses to block here, Ben very likely will be scorch marking this Pegasus to get it out of the way. Scorch Mark playing a pretty good role uh, in these kind of matchups against the Orzov because of Dedo's Transport. Uh, no, sorry, my apologies. I think Dennis Transport has three toughness. What are cards? Yeah, Transport has three toughness. Uh, Racketeers has two toughness. So, uh, Scorch Mark being able to exile the creatures um, so they don't actually die. Uh, so the afterlife trigger does not uh, go into effect, so they will not be making any spirits if you are able to Scorch Mark, scorch mark their afterlife creatures. Ben here deciding what he wants to do. He's going to go ahead and pass the turn. He does have a skewer of the critics in hand. So he could have skewered face there if he wanted to just push a little bit more damage, but he probably wants to keep that for some of the high costed creatures he's going to be seeing here pretty soon in a dare. So that Knight of Sorrows looking like a pretty good drop here. 5 mana, 3 3. 
and we do have it up on the board there. So five mana three three can block an additional creature each combat and has afterlife one. So when it dies, it will create a one one white and black spirit creature token with flying. So there's that two damage from the uh, Pegasus there. Uh, afterlife being a uh, nice keyword that provides uh, stickiness to creatures. So if your opponents do take care of them, they still uh, impact the board by making spirit tokens. Looks like Ben here going to be savage smashing something. So likely buffing up the goblin and taking care of one of Darren's creatures, whether that be the Pegasus or the Knight of Sorrows. So goblin going up to a 5-5. Five five. I'm going to be going and fighting that Pegasus. He now has a 5-3 on board, but choosing not to swing with it, and instead choosing just to attack with the Fairy Duelist. Wow. There's a Sphinx of the Guild Pact. A seven mana five five flyer. It counts as every color, and uh, has hex proof from mono colored. So it can't be dealt damage from things like scorch mark and screw the critics and some of the mono black removal spells. But things like get the point in Rakdos and the law mages binding in uh, Azorius colors, those will still affect these Sphinx. We're going to go ahead and play the Debtor's Transport here. 6 mana, 5, 3 with Afterlife 2. And Darren going to go ahead and swing in for 3. Ben really needs to hit a red source here. That looks like the Spellbreaker. Yep. So I'm going to throw a counter on that. And just going to swing in with the duelist again. Darren draw there another Pegasus. Nice blocker there for the Fairy Duelist. He also has the Ores of Racketeers to play, or the Sphinx. Racketeer is a 3-2 when it deals combat damage to your opponent. Uh, when it does combat damage to a player, your opponent uh, must discard a card. And it has Afterlife 2. Likely the better card here just to play would be that Sphinx of the, of the Guild Pack. Big 5-5 five, five flying beater. As a real threat to Ben's life toll there, as he is only at 13. So before casting anything, Darren going to go ahead and attack here with both things. Ben lining up blocks here. The 4-4 Spellbreaker into the 3-3 three, three Knight, and the 3-3 three, three Goblet into the 5-3 Debtor's Transport. So both of Darren's creatures are going to die here, netting him 3 Spirit Tokens. And Ben's just going to lose his Goblin here. So there's the three spirits there with the die on it. It is not a four power, it is not three plus one plus one counters, but it is a marking for three copies. <laughs> so Darren can either play the Sphinx or he can play both of the other creatures here, opting instead to go ahead and play that Sphinx. And I believe it is foil as well. Uh, as it does block the Spellbreaker and poses a real threat, a big flying threat. Ben still not drawing a red source or any land at all. That looks like a Flames of the Raised Board, which we did look at earlier, cost 6 mana. 
been really struggling in these two games for, to find enough mana. The land is few and far between. There's an Undercity Scavenger. Four mana, three, three. You can sacrifice a creature, and then we'll enter the battlefield with two plus one plus one counters, and you get to scry. So, a nice way to just sacrifice some of your spirit tokens there. I'm going to go ahead and do that. I'm going to sacrifice one of my spirit tokens to the scavenger there. The scavenger is going to have two plus plus encounters and he'll be able to scry. He will scry two. So looking there in a rester zeal there, nice white pump spell and I believe it's another watchful giant. Both of those cards looking like pretty good cards. I'm going to go ahead and keep both of those on top. So Pegs is coming out here. Moving to combat here, Darren. Thinking about what he wants to attack with, if anything. Ban just does have the 1-2 flyer. So attack with the Sphinx here, seems pretty good. Gonna come in for five. <laughs> then you're thinking about if he wants to block or not, decides to just take the damage. And he's gonna fall down to eight. He is dead on the next turn to all of the all of Darren's flyers if he does not have an answer here. Looks like he does. He has a savage smash. So he's gonna fight. Uh, the Spellbreaker and the Sphinx. So there you go. A nice multicolored answer there to the Sphinx. It does have uh, Hexproof from monocolored cards. Problem is that Darren still has a 5 5 on board and 3 power worth of flying. We also saw coming up from Darren Scry that he has another watchful. He has a watchful giant and a pump spell coming up pretty soon. So swinging in with the uh, spirit tokens here and pumping one of them up to deal with that fairy duelist, while keeping the five five back to block the cruel spellbreaker. Arrestor Zeal does have addendum on it, so if he were to cast it during his main phase, it would give the creature flying until end of turn. He's thinking about going ahead and giving flying to the scavenger. Yeah, so he's going to make the scavenger into a 7-7 seven, seven and give it flying. Seems like a pretty easy block there with the, uh, the fairy duels there for Ben, as the scavenger does not have trample. So Darren swinging in with everything there. Ben may have had a skitter eel there. Still no second red source. Uh, if Darren could uh, take the uh, Rester Zeal off of the uh, scavenger and put it to his graveyard just to maintain board state, there would be nice. Ben swinging in for four here, dropping Darren down to nine. 
and playing a skewer of the critics. I'm going to put Darren down to six and concede the game there. So, unfortunate for Ben, really missing those land drops has hurt him quite a lot. Uh, Hermangulus, that costs five. Raiseboard costs six. Sunder Shaman, he needed that second red source. Rumbling Ruins also costing six. And having that Scorch Mark in hand, which really didn't do enough damage to deal with anything on Darren's side of the field. Uh, so Darren being able to play some very strong uh, five and six drops from Orzov, and playing Pegasus and having some spirits, and some pump spells, and some combat tricks, and Blade Brand, and tying together to a pretty nice deck. Being able to fly over a lot of Ben's.